A nice and warm welcome to our webinar. My name is Eric. I work as a test consultant for Shoefreed and today I'm going to talk about the assessment of basic neuropsychological functions with the test set Cockbutt. So what are we going to talk about today? At first I'll give you an overview why do we need neuropsychological assessments at all and how does this need to develop in the future. Then we are going to talk about the application areas and characteristics of the test set Cockbutt. We're going to have a close look at the individual tests. We're going to see what the test set scoring looks like. And we're going to have a look at the main quality criteria like reliability and validity, validity of the test set Cockbutt. So why do we need neuropsychological assessments at all? As you probably know, cognitive deficits are omnipresent. Almost all neurological and most psychiatric diseases, cognitive deficits are clearly evident. So here are some examples for neurological disorders which are associated with cognitive deficits. For example, stroke, traumatic brain injury, mild cognitive impairment, dementia, and so on. But not only neurological disorders associated with cognitive, de cognitive deficits, psychiatric disorders are as well. Here we can see a meta-analysis from Milan et al. from 2012. And as we can see in this graph, um, almost all psychiatric disorders like major depression, bipolar disorder, schizophrenia, OCD, PTSD are associated with cognitive deficits. Another important point is that the demand for neuropsychological assessment is growing. As you might know, the average life expectancy is rising and thus the probability of brain-related diseases like stroke or dementia is. On the left side right here, you can see the population pyramid graph for the European Union in 2010. On the right side, you can see it for 2050. And as you can see right now, there are, most of the people are around 40 years or 45, 50 years old, but in the future this age structure will change and more people will be older. So the demand for comprehensive and efficient assessment tools is constantly growing. And this is why we develop test sets like the test set Cockbutt to fulfill this demand. So now let's have a look at the application areas and characteristics of the test set Cockbutt. The test set Cockbutt is designed to assess basic neuropsychological functions. The duration is around 50 minutes long if you use the add-on test, for example, for measuring the neglect, it will be a little bit longer. The dimensions we are measuring right here are attention, memory and executive functions. We have a representative norm sample ranging from 11 to 80 years, quite comprehensive. We have two different test forms which are parallel to each other, so we can have valid follow-up testing with the test set. The functions are mainly it's neurocognitive screening. It, we developed it to have a sensitive detection of impairments across disorders and indications of deficits which are relevant to everyday life. And it is the basis for further more specific neurocognitive assessments. So if you, you already think that somebody might have dementia, we recommend you use a more specific test set like the test set CFD. The tested cockboard is more general neurocognitive screening. So here you can see the dimensions we are measuring. On the one side, it is, as I said, attention. We are measuring alertness, the divided attention, the processing speed. Then we have figural long-term memory measured by the FGT. And we are also measuring executive functions like verbal working memory, cognitive flexibility and planning ability. So now let's take a look at the individual tests of the test set. The test set starts with a classic paradigm, the trail making test L and the part A of it where the um, instruction is to connect the dots ranging from 1 to 25. So at first you click on 1, then 2, then 3, then 4 and so on. And depending on how fast you can react, your processing speed is higher or lower. The second test in the test set Cockbutt 
is the figural memory test and we start with the learning phase as you can see right here different figures or shapes are presented and the task is to remember them as good as possible after the learning phase of the FGT we have a test which measures alertness which is part of attention in an intrinsic and visual way the task is pretty easy to comprehend we have a black circle appearing on the screen and if this happens the client must press the green button after testing for alertness the second phase of the FGT follows measuring short-term delayed memory in a free recall and there's an empty frame presented and the task is to make the lines of the figure visible by clicking on the corresponding spot inside the frame and to rebuild the figures which were learned in the learning phase. So we have shorter memory right here. Then we have the second part of the trail making test which measures cognitive flexibility. The instructions are similar but a little bit different. We also now have letters on the screen and the task is, task is to connect the numbers with letters first one then A then two then B then three then C and so on. After this measurement of executive functions, there is another test for executive functions called INHIP, which measures response inhibition in a go-no-go -no -go paradigm. And the client gets different kinds of figures presented, triangles and circles. And the triangles are the go stimuli. Here the client has to press the green button. The circles are the no-go stimuli, stimuli. Here the client doesn't have to press any button. So, and as you see, we have a lot of frequent go stimuli where they should be in reaction and rare no go stimuli where this reaction should be inhibited. And here we can see in the results if the client is actually able to inhibit his own or her own response. So after the measurement of response inhibition, we are looking at another classic paradigm as well. Here we are measuring verbal working memory using a cl classic NBAC task. So different letters are presented and the task is if you have a present letter which corresponds is the same letter as the one before the last one, like in this case with G, then the client has to react. The next test is designed for measuring divided attention in a cross-modal way, so we're measuring attention on two different channels, the auditory and the visual channel. And the task is if a square becomes brighter or the tone becomes quieter two times in a row, the green button should be pressed. So let's look at the different channels. There's the example that in the auditory channel nothing happens, the tone stays equal in loudness two times in a row, but the square becomes brighter two times in a row then the client has to react and now let's take a look at another scenario the the visual channel nothing really happens but the tone becomes quieter two times in a row and in this case the client also has to react so now we have the third phase of the figure memory test which is the long-term re delayed recall which is pretty much the same concerning the instructions as the short-term delayed recall. So the client has to enter all the figures which were remembered like in the phase before. So to get even more diagnostic information, we have a recognition phase in the figural memory test as well. So here different kinds of figures are presented and the client has to decide if this is a new figure or if he or she has already seen it before. So, at last we have the Tower of London, another classic test to measure planning ability. Here, three different balls are shown with different colors and three different rods with different heights. And there's always a picture where you can see a formation of these balls on these different rods. And the task is to rebuild this formation as efficient as possible. So you can see a summary of all the cockbutt tests. As you can see below, there are two add-on tests, which we didn't have a closer look.
into these ones can also be used and they measure neglect and the subjectively experienced mental ability which is especially important in some psychiatric disorders like schizophrenia. So now let's have a short look in on the test set scoring. So we use the latest psychometric scoring methods right here. We have different kind of indices. The Cockbart index um, on top, which is based on structural equation modeling and which can be used as an overview for physicians, relatives of the patients or the patients themselves. We have dimension specific indices, which can are mainly relevant for the choice of interventions, for example, and also the main variable per sub dimension, which has some specific information. And as you can see on the far right side, the primary and follow up testing are presented together in one result table. So we can have a look, is there a change in the neuropsychological functions or not? And of course, we advise to use the two different parallel test forms if you conduct follow-up testing. So now we're already on the last point. Does the test set Cockbart fulfill the main quality criteria? At first, let's have a look at reliability. You can see the tests on the left side and test forms, the variables, and then the classic Cronbach's alpha and the more modern measure grade slower bound. And as you see, um, the re reliability is in a range of sufficient and in most cases it's good or excellent. So now let's have a look at the construct validity. As I said before we use structural equation modeling and our analysis show that the factorial structures are in line with the theory the different attention tests load on an attention factor, the different tests for executive functions load on effect of executive functions and so on. And as you can see down below, the fit indices look pretty good. We have two batters of fit indices, RMSEA and SRMR, which are supposed to be as close to zero as possible and they are quite low. And we have two goodness of fit indices, the CFI and TLI, which are high and should be close to one. So the construct validity looks good. Now have, let's have a look at the criterion validity, which is of course very important when you want to see if the test set can discriminate between persons with and without psychiatric disorders, for example. And we conducted a multicentric study with the test set. And the main question was if the test set is able to reliably discriminate between healthy people and patients. Of course, we conducted a parallelization by age, sex and level of education. And as you can see here for the comparison of healthy persons and patients with schizophrenia, they significantly differ with medium to large effect sizes in the Cockbutt index in all dimension specific indices, as well as in all main variables. The Cohen's D ranges from 0 0.8 to 1.2. And let's have a look of the comparison between healthy persons and patients suffering from depression. Here you can also see that healthy persons and patients with depression significantly differ with medium to large effect sizes in the Cockbutt index and in all dimension specific indices. Here cones D ranges from 0 0.4 to 0 0.75. So let's summarize all of this. The Cockbart is a digital test set for the assessment of basic neuropsychological functions. We have parallel test forms for valid follow-up testing. We have comprehensive norms ranging from 11 to 80 years. There are innovations in scoring like the Cockbart index and dimension-specific indices. And we have joint tabular presentation of primary and follow-up assessments. And the test set Cockbart fulfills the main quality criteria. So this is all from my side. Thank you very much for your attention. I wish you a nice day. Goodbye.